The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then the man who was blind went and washed, and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but... It is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. They did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, who had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now... I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man... We do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? 
and they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he had found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel for the Second Scrutiny, we hear about Jesus healing a man who was blind from birth. The Gospels tell us Jesus healed a number of people who were blind. But as far as we know, only the man in today's Gospel was blind from birth. For example, in St. Mark's Gospel, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus asks Jesus, My teacher, let me see again. Again implies he was once able to see, but had lost his sight. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regains his sight and follows Jesus on the way. Although Jesus healed Bartimaeus by speaking, he healed other people who were blind in the Gospels by touching their eyes. Like in today's Gospel, where we hear, He spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. You're probably thinking, that is disgusting. Spitting in public is bad enough. Smearing it on people's eyes? Jesus, didn't our Blessed Mother teach you anything? I'm just kidding. Whenever we hear something odd in the Gospels, it's an invitation to look closer. The Greek word we hear translated there as mud in today's Gospel is pelos, which is the word for clay. What's significant about that? Well, in the book of Genesis, in the second creation account, we hear, The Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth. I'm not sure if you remember your days of playing in sandboxes, but if if you've ever tried to form things out of the dust of the earth, they don't generally hold form together so well on their own. You need to add moisture. But when you do, you get mud or clay. And so in the Jewish tradition, it was understood that when God formed the first man from the dust of the earth, He formed him from clay and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So in today's gospel, by the act of making mud or clay, Jesus is claiming something. Just as the word through whom all things were made first formed man from clay, Jesus, the word made flesh, is working a new creation. He's forming for this man new eyes. Interestingly enough, we're not told if Jesus actually asked him if he wanted to see. He just set the process of this new creation into motion. And this is why this gospel is so appropriate for the second scrutiny, because it's powerfully symbolic of the journey that the elect, those preparing for baptism, have been on. Because in all of our lives, God always makes the first move, whether in creating us or in restoring us. Behind each person who approaches the font of baptism is a story of a new creation, a story of restoration, of redemption, a story lovingly first set into motion by the God who lovingly first made us from the dust of the earth. 
Now, when this man is questioned by his neighbors and others who had known him before, he tells them his story. The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. I went and washed and received my sight. Baptism is just the beginning. So was receiving sight for this man, because as we hear very quickly, his neighbors are not the last people to question him in today's gospel. One of the resources I regularly check while preparing a homily is PreacherExchange.com by Father Jude Siciliano, a Dominican Dominican friar of the St. Martin de Porres province, which spans the south and southeastern U.S. And in his commentary on today's gospel, he shares a story of a neurologist who explained that people who suffered from childhood blindness, who later received the ability to see after surgical intervention, can't immediately interact with the world the way sighted people do, just because they can see, because their brain hasn't made all those connections between sight and touch. Depth perception, for example, has to be learned. And they'll need to learn and rec- to recognize what the everyday objects that they interact with actually look like. This is a gradual process of catching up. Of course, in today's gospel, Jesus doesn't surgically restore this man's sight. He does so miraculously. The gospel doesn't tell us then about the man's journey of learning to navigate a world he can finally physically see. The gospel tells us rather about the man's journey of learning to navigate a world he can now spiritually see, because that too is a gradual process of catching up. The man hadn't seen Jesus at first. He only knew that Jesus had restored his sight. So he didn't claim to know things he didn't know. He only knows what happened to him. But as he gets thrown almost immediately into the midst of this conflict between the Pharisees and Jesus, by returning again and again to his story, to what God had done for him, his spiritual sight develops. Let's take sin, for example. Jesus' disciples asked him at the beginning of the gospel, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, we might smugly turn our noses up at this seemingly primitive and somewhat offensive approach to sickness, but perhaps this mentality is more pervasive than we think. Does not the same question, when something bad happens to us, lurk in our minds? What did I ever do to deserve this? That doesn't sound so different from who sinned, this man or his parents. But Jesus, whose spiritual sight is twenty twenty, tells his disciples and us, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind, so that God's works might be revealed in him. In other words, God does not look at us when we are suffering and think, the way we often do, that somehow we deserved this. That is spiritual blindness. No. God looks and sees our suffering and is moved with compassion and has already begun the healing process. He has already begun a new creation in us, even before we ask him to. The man who received his physical sight is beginning to catch up to the way Jesus sees things spiritually. When the Pharisees press him to say Jesus is a sinner, he says, I do not know whether he's a sinner One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. He is beginning to see himself and others the way God sees us, not as failed creations, but new creations that Jesus, the Son of Man, is in the process of bringing about. And when we recognize the beauty of the way that God really sees us, naturally leads to one thing, and he worshipped him. Worship, gratitude, 
thanksgiving, or in Greek, eucharisteo, that is, eucharist. The healing of the man born blind sheds light on Christian baptism. The Catechism says, Baptism is the sacrament of faith. Just as the man who was born, who was blind from birth, went and washed and received his physical sight, so we go to the font of baptism. We are washed and we receive spiritual sight. We receive the gift of faith. We begin to see God, ourselves, others, and the rest of creation as God sees. And just like people who have regained their sight have to gradually learn to navigate the world with their newfound sight, we too have to gradually learn to navigate the world with our newfound faith. And it is a process which involves reevaluating the way we think about God, ourselves, others in the world, just as the man in the gospel had to reevaluate who he thought Jesus really was, not just the man called Jesus, nor even a prophet, but the Son of Man, foretold by the prophet Daniel, coming with clouds of heaven. This process will inevitably meet with opposition, and we will need the strength that comes from God, which does not accuse or exclude or claim to know things it doesn't know. But like the man in the gospel, the strength that makes us faithful witnesses to the truth we do know, the story of how God opened our eyes.